I mean, it, to, to believe in the Great Reset is not a conspiracy theory because this is a, an avowed plan. I mean, there's no, cons there's no amount of conspiracy theory necessary in order to believe that this project is something that some people believe in on a, and are attempting to uh, purvey to the broader uh, public that are trying to get taken up, uh, their initiatives taken up in the social body. Uh, the, great, the Great Reset is really uh, a propaganda campaign that was initiated by the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab in the United Nations. And it's an effort to reset the economy and really reset the whole social structure. Uh, one of the main uh, premises of it is that global warming uh, is uh, an imminent uh, danger and an imminent threat to uh, civilization and they, they I think they firmly believe it and they want to reset the uh, economy in the terms of uh, carbon use and and also consumption in general so there's a lot of uh, consumption changes they're looking for a reduction in consumption in the first world first of all and then a kind of leveling of, of consumption across the globe because they talk about a fairer, greener future. So fairer is by, ver to be fair, what, what they mean by that is uh, equitable. And by equitable, what they mean is basically everybody consuming the same amount. And this is not based on any kind of merit. This is just that consumption should be level across the world. And that's really what they're aiming at. And they're using uh, various techniques and means by which to bring this about. Uh, one of them is by, by uh, cajoling corporations uh, into accepting their, their, uh, n their ideas and then enacting them through various means. One of them is the environmental, social, and governance score, which is a way to in, uh, it's a way to, to get corporations to abide by the environmental precepts that they have in mind, the social, which is really social justice precepts, and the governance precepts, which really have to do with how well do they cooperate with the state. Mm -hmm. uh, so this ESG score is huge. It is being used uh, by, for example, BlackRock Inc., Larry Fink, BlackRock Inc., sent a, a letter to CEOs in the beginning of the year in which he basically, it, it really is an implicit threat. If you do not abide by, or if your index is low, you will not see investments in your companies. And this is the largest, you know, BlackRock Inc. is the largest in, uh, asset manager in the world. And so when somebody like says, somebody like Larry Fink says, if you don't abide by this ESG score, if you don't get your ESG score up high, you won't see investments. That's very serious talk. That means that you will, you'll be starved out of capital. And so this is a way to direct capital to what I consider to be like approved uh, producers and distributors and to starve off others. And I, I see it as ending in a, the Great Reset as ending in a two-tiered structure in effect of basically corporate monopolists on top and a kind of actually existing socialism on the ground. <laughs> that perplexed you. <laughs> well, what does actually existing well, socialism on the ground mean exactly? Okay, well, I, you know what? I, you've heard the phrase actually existing socialism. This, this was the phrase used by dissidents in, in the Soviet Union and elsewhere to describe what life's really like under socialism rather than in the uh, treatises of Marx and others. Okay, so this is very, it's a very ironic uh, kind of sarcastic term that's meant to criticize socialism without saying anything really, actually existing socialism. So why I use that phrase in connection with this is, is that socialism never ends in the, in, in the it never is established in the way that it's, that it's claimed to be. It's never the working class taking over the means of production and the um, you know, complete control of democratic uh, economic democracy. This is never how it, it, it ends up. It has to be controlled. The, since you take away prices and you take away 
a free market, you have to have somebody deciding what's made and what's sold and you know, who, who can buy it and so on and so forth. So it's a command economy. So I use actually existing socialism because it, this, is, this is a socialism that's not according to the textbook. It's not according to the, uh, the f founders of Marxian socialism. It's not according to their plan. But it's the way it turns out a lot of the time. That is, you have an, a ruling elite that controls uh, the resources and effect, and you have everyone else on the ground and effectively equal, but equally miserable, uh, equally repressed, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's why I use the term actually existing socialism to refer to that. And what I mean by that is there's a two-tiered system. You have kind of a corporate monopoly class on top with the state, and then you have a sort of uh, uh, the broad population living in a kind of stasis, uh, economic stasis, uh, without much prospects. Because uh, after all, according to the World Economic Forum, by 2030, you'll own nothing and be happy. And that's in, that's in their words. Right. Well, I mean, so I, I think it was argued um, that, you know, this was just one possible future, the way yes. you're, what you're describing right sure. now. What, um, and and so, but but that's that's interesting because you know, in this book, the sort of the the whole vision for the actual Great Reset, the title of the book, is outlined. Um, right. Uh, I don't think the outcome that well, you're they, describing is outlined. They they don't tell you what they what what it would come out to, but I think that's implicit in what they're saying. But 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 the main thing is it's not sort of someone up there. No. Exactly. You know. Uh, this is not a puppeteer, you know, pulling strings, effectively, you know, some evil oligarchy. <laughs> you know, we're not seeing that kind of uh, that kind of uh, manipulation. What we're seeing is kind of a ideology and propaganda. So, what ties it all together is ideology, and then the way it's transmitted is through propaganda. Uh, it's not. It's not like a uh, a fait accompli. That's for sure. This is not necessarily going to happen, and if I have my way, it won't. And I know many others who agree. Uh, but this is the kind of campaign that they're undertaking, and it's an effort on their part. It's, a, it's an effort to bring this about. And so this is the really interesting part, because again, going back to this book, it's actually the, the premise is that coronavirus, or the CCP virus, as we call it mm -hmm. here at the Epoch Times, pandemic, is the opportunity to really push this kind of agenda for, forward faster, mm -hmm. right? That's, yeah. that, that's, that's the premise. And, you know, we're, I can't help but think about some of what's happening in Australia, mm -hmm. right? Where there's a lot of, I mean, really, I think, unarguably authoritarian mm -hmm. type initiatives being right. implemented in the name of saving society. Right. Right? Indeed. In fact, we see the kind of erosion uh, of the independent producers, of the sort of independent entrepreneurial middle class being destroyed. Where you have basically, by the way, in Australia, from what I've read, a good 50 to 60 percent of the population is actually behind they agree with this, with the lockdowns and the whole sort of draconian approach that's being taken there. So, but a lot of those people happen to be employed by the state or they have institutional positions that really aren't touched by this. They can basically, they're part of the laptop class, they can work from home. They're not bothered by this at all. So they seem to be in support of it. Yet there's the whole, uh, shall we say, the sort of the middle uh, the middling business class that's being crushed. And we saw the same thing in the United States with the lockdowns here. So this, it kind of supports my theory of what, where this heads, because it heads to this kind of uh, bifurcation of society into this kind of co uh, corporate state monopoly over everything. And then the, the, you know, the basic eradication of uh, the middle class producer and uh, a two-tiered system and, and the abrogation of rights. There was a manhunt for someone who sneezed in an elevator. 
I mean, in, in Australia. They're, they, shot, they shot dogs because people might have rescued them. Uh, so, I mean, this is just, it's just crazy. So, the, uh, the rights have been uh, destroyed and uh, they seem to think, I guess the majority seems to think this is temporary. But I worry about that.